fifth edition of the R Plus Science program just started in Belgrade. It wasn't as we planned back in, at the beginning of the year. Originally it was planned for July, but due to all circumstances we were forced to halt it a bit and to move for September. Originally it was planned to be dedicated fully on the, uh, to the artificial intelligence and many of its manifestations. However, we were forced to re restructure and reconsider our approach and uh, actually to involve new realities that we faced since the beginning of this year. Unfortunately, also we had to postpone all international guests and presentations this year. So R Plus Science uh, edition number five is formally is formally untitled as R Plus Science Lab, meaning that our work is in progress and we are just presenting a sequence of our achievements to integrate science deeper into society and to initiate long-lasting collaborations and interdisciplinary teams between artists, scientists and uh, creators and professionals of all kinds. Currently, uh, you may see us at the exhibition Intelligence uh, zero 01, which is representing the central point of our R Plus Science Lab uh, program this year. It is also happening simultaneously in Trieste as part of the Euroscience Open Forum Conference, as also at your place, guys, in Linz, as a Ars Electronica Belgrade Garden, one of the 120 virtual gardens across the world. Usually, R Plus Science programs are consisti consisting of numerous selections where we are actually presenting to our audi audience different segments of the programs that, that we are involved to, which are coming out of the project. In this case, this is European Artificial Intelligence Lab, or through activities by our partners in the network created to, to, to that project. Unfortunately, as I said, international part is lacking, except program, partners' programs in Trieste and in Linz. However, we are presenting only nationally based artists and artworks, those of people who are working and living in Serbia or those who get significant uh, recognition across the globe and uh, uh, which works can be seen at numerous events across the globe. The major part of the program is always uh, given to the award-winning main artwork from the National Art Plus Science AI Lab selection. The second selection, which is represented here, is A plus S plus CPN, meaning that CPN, uh, our Center for the Promotion of Science, actually is facilitating this dialogue and providing uh, support and uh, opportunities for further development and the creation of interdisciplinary teams. And finally, a uh, significant part of our exhibition is uh, uh, offering insights into the works of uh, renowned Serbian artists to the National Plus selection. My colleagues here and I will give you a sort of guided virtual tour to our exhibition. We are here at the Cultural Center Magazine, which is uh, probably one or only fully independently run cultural center, offering space for uh, creative people, for artists or other researchers of all kinds to, uh, to, to work on, on, on their own fully independently at, uh, just with the support of uh, facilities here. At the, at the magazine. Here, we, here with me are Maya Ciric. Maya is an independent curator for Serbia. She also runs Serbian pavilion at the Venice Biennale twice, once as a commissioner and the other time as a, as a selector. And then two of my colleagues from the Center for the Promotion of Science, uh, Bojan Kenig and Petar Laušević. Petar is coordinating uh, uh, artificial, European Artificial Intelligence Lab project while they are together coordinating A plus S plus CPN uh, selection and also Bojan is in charge of uh, generally program activities because he's belonging more to the program activities department at our center. So at the moment here in the uh, gallery of the Cultural Center magazine at the exhibition Intelligence 01 you can see six pieces and we will give you now a short introduction to all of them. Many of them uh, will be visible, will be available through our uh, Arts Electronica Belgrade Garden. We already prepared uh, documentation materials, so for many of those artworks actually you will have much more detailed uh, video documentation or video insights into their approach, their, their ideas and the concept and context of presented artworks. 
In 2015, after our initial involvement in the European Digital Art and Science Network, CPN starts to establish the direct links between scientific and educational communities with artist, artists participating in our diverse art and science uh, projects and, uh, and networks. Well, I'm really glad for being able to present our winning Art Fork Digital Prayer. It is based on the dichotomy, on the analysis between two major symbols, one based in our traditions in the Middle Ages, which is linked to the traditional Byzantine-based icons done by uh, Serbian artists in Middle Ages, and also the artificial creation, creation of image based on machine learning and machine vision, which is one of the unavoidable segments of the current, current AI developments. Although Christina is quite a young artist, actually her approach, her attempt is based on her quite uh, detailed investigations be before. This version is the last final version of her ideas how to analyze and open our tradition through orthodox Byzantine-based icons and on the other side how to represent uh, advanced technologies and their inputs and influence on our work. So the uh, basic interface is around the Byzantine I like figuration and the creation of a, of a religious image. On the opposite side stands the artificial, technological attempt to create an, an image based on the visual inputs that was given to the AI neural, neural networks. She collected more than 4,000 digital reproduction of original Byzantine-style icons. Systems were more or less fed by them for a long period of time and they will learn how to analyze them, how to do the analysis in order to create a further synthesis of, uh, based on, the, on, on that data. In this context, we can ask the question whether the artificially created image in 21st century, based on whatever kind of inputs, in this kind it's, a, it's an orthodox icon, could fulfill the needs of humans of our time like it was a lot of centuries ago when artists then created religious images which are trying to share that story about invisible God, about invisible stories behind. Like today where a lot of invisibility is going on inside the technological AI-based systems, in that time, centuries ago, actually the religion was also creating a reality behind the things that we can approach by our senses. We are standing in front of the artwork by Filip Kostic, an artist that I discovered while doing studio visit at the Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, an institution that Filip Kostic is affiliated with. Uh, Filip Kostic is of, the, of a Serbian or, origin and he was born in the 1990s, but he has emigrated uh, to the United States we ha where he has uh, already achieved significant results uh, in his career. I would say that he's a representative of, of, real representative of his generation. And uh, this work, which is specially commissioned by the Center of the Promotion of Science for, the, for this occasion, for this exhibition, is uh, entitled Running at the Frame Rate. To produce this video, Filip Kostic was playing with the software which is called Unreal Engine, in which uh, the environments were generated uh, thanks to the, uh, I mean, due to the frame rate and the, uh, the strength of the frame rate. And basically, it is a very um, software-based story that is uh, somehow connected to the poetics of the time of the newest generation of digital natives in a sense that their existence is uh, connected to their ability to generate the frame uh, rate. So uh, hardware, software and individual experience. Here we see a little boy, a little avatar and he is actually having struggled to keep up with the necessity to generate the frame rate that could be, that could be adjusted to the computers, computers in uh, his surroundings. Philip Kostic is constantly checking and storing the current running frame rate of the machine it's running, on which varies from computer to computer, and he used that average to make decisions in the world. 
The computer has a sort of safe zone, which is also determined by the computer running it. That safe zone is always a train, but is more or less detailed depending on what the computer can do. But it's always a place where the computer can rest. When the decision is made to spawn a landscape and begin pushing itself, the system begins also to lock the frame at the frame rate of that space, always saving it at an averaging against other instances that is used in that space. It uses this to make more decisions in the future based on its performance. Uh, the boy has a script that is also dependent on the frame rate and it's written in a youthful, naive and way of wanting to do better and better within its context. It's like everything else in the world that responds to the frame rate. So the whole game ends up being a world building tool based on the capability of the system and the bias of working harder, but the boy is sort of a face of character, even though the world really is also a representation of that too. In a roundabout shortening of all of what I just said, everything that is placed into the world is dependent on the frame rate. New Scope is the latest in a series of visual essays by Vladan Joller developed with different collaborators. His previous work, uh, Anatomy of an AI System, uh, developed together with Kate Crawford is very well known and this work is already uh, in collections of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and is also part of the permanent Ars Electronica Center exhibition Understanding AI. This work, New Scope, is uh, a uh, collaborative work with, of Vladan Joller with Matteo Pascanelli. Uh, it is a cartography on the limits of artificial intelligence. It ended as a provocation to both computer sciences and the humanities. Its main purpose is to challenge the mystification of artificial intelligence. In this work, machine learning is considered as an instrument of knowledge magnification and helps to perceive features, patterns, and correlations through vast spaces of data beyond human reach. Borrowing the idea from Wilhelm Gottfried Leibniz, the Nuscope diagram applies the analogy of optical media as the structure of all machine learning apparatuses. So in the tradition of science, machine learning is just a new scope, an instrument to see and navigate the space of knowledge. And like all instruments of measurement and perception, it always comes with inbuilt aberrations. The logical lenses of machine learning embody faults and biases. The work shows us that to understand machine learning and register its impact on society is to study the degree by which social data are diffracted and distorted by these lenses. We are standing uh, in front of two videos by Victoria Vesna, who is also of a Serbian origin, but is also based in California. She is the director of the Art and Science Center at the UCLA in Los Angeles. This video is based uh, uh, on a collaboration with several uh, professionals in different uh, fields. Some of them are scientific, some of them are uh, artistic. And it was in the frame of Tsukuba University uh, in Japan. Uh, so uh, what they did together was examining the uh, behaviors of the large flocks. Here we have the, behind me we have the animation which is uh, taking uh, the aesthetics from the origami birds and is uh, following the behavioral patterns of the large flock of birds, half a million flock of birds. And she, uh, this is based on the data that she has accumulated together with Charles Taylor, uh, who is a biologist. So what they did later on, they made a, a large environment thanks to the technical capabilities at the Tsukuba University. And it is a three-day projected space in which people were exposed to the environment uh, as if they were uh, p taking part in the flock of birds. So all the people who took part in this environment, they were monitored by sensors uh, that were ex exactly uh, positioned in the space. And it is a kind of a way of under 
understanding how we can go against the Anthropocene and how people can um, calculate in different species in their behaviorals and how all these uh, behavioral patterns can function together. The work uh, IVY uh, is one of two uh, projects uh, developed within the Art Plus Science Plus CPM uh, selection. A selection started uh, early this year with a, a series of uh, meetings and discussions on different topics surrounding artificial intelligence. Uh, from a series of these meetings, uh, uh, two groups of artists were formed and a group of five uh, artists and scientists uh, started developing the uh, Ivy project. Ivy is a pervasive game. Uh, it is a mobile app that can be downloaded and used by anybody. The game takes the player uh, through a journey around uh, mapped landmarks around Belgrade city center. Uh, every location within the game problematizes and uh, starts a series of questions surrounding a certain topic important for artificial intelligence. The aim of the game is to put the player in a position where they would question human and algorithmic ways of decision making and their future consequences. In the exhibition space, an accompanying video where the artists explain in more detail how they envisioned Ivy can also be viewed. Also, the visitors of the exhibition are invited to give their opinion of some, on some future uses of AI technology. Also, two picnic discussions will be organized at the Belgrade Fortress of Kalemegdan, designed as a place to exchange lived experiences, a space to dwell deeper into topics opened up by the game. Aerosonar is an audio spatial installation which translates uh, current and publicly available data of air pollution and it translates it to the collective melody which this installation represents, actually. Aerosonar team members were interested in sonifying the air pollution data publicly available, which is usually visually presented, and they wanted to make a melody out of the raw data. They analyzed the air pollution data, chose the parameters they wanted to sonify, made and shaped the sounds and final melodies attached to each of the parameters, materializing all of the elements in one experience that they named Aerosonar. The authors chose five different air pollution parameters and assigned uh, to each of these uh, parameters one melody. Together, they form a collective melody of aerosonar, which is modified by the variation of measured uh, air pollution data. But not only that, the visitors can interact with the installation through uh, sensors, and they can become aware of its presence. Going through the installation, they also change the melody of air pollution, which this installation represents. Variations in melody reminds us of processes within the biosphere and the relations of various elements that are constant and cyclic. It also reflects the anthropogenic impact on all these processes. This dynamic is providing the soundscape of the aerosonar and makes us reflect on the cycles that we humans are part of. Going out to the next step where technology is already an integral part of these processes. Here I am about to give you a tip from our catalogue and our fantastic programme, so I would like to suggest you to book the 13th uh, of September in your calendars at uh, 9 p.m. Central European time, and that is the time where Los Angeles will merge with Belgrade online and Victoria Vesna will make an online performance, uh, which is also meditation in which she is using the database of the Serbian birds that Jasna Jovicevic, who is uh, the winner from the last uh, year, she, will, she collected this data around the lake of Palic uh, 
in the north of Serbia. So this is specially commissioned for this occasion. And if you want to have a live experience and connect to the uh, birds in our environment in a digital realm, welcome. Okay, looking through our program, I would like to uh, emphasize a whole series of uh, workshops for kids uh, from our virtual science club. So this is where uh, kids both from primary or secondary schools uh, can see more on uh, artificial intelligence, check their knowledge on what they actually know about artificial intelligence, uh, see how their Instagram knows what they like, or uh, do a workshop called uh, School for Robots. The team that made Ivy Game is planning and preparing two picnics that they named Picnic Session. This uh, event will be at uh, Belgrade Fortress Park and in this space uh, it will be uh, open and free exchange between citizens, uh, players of the game and also game creators. But not only that, in this uh, event, in this picnic, we will have food that is made by recipes that uh, uh, comes from artificial intelligence. And of course, bring your own blanket. In parallel with our exhibition at the Cultural Center Magazine, actually we are offering pretty wide program activities, parallel activities, educational activities, discussions, topics, uh, do dominantly, of course, in virtual form. However, one uh, interesting segment of the program I want to emphasize now, which is a contribution by our colleagues for the, from the Faculty of Dramatic Arts, uh, University of Arts in Belgrade. Uh, they have really inspiring uh, interactive arts department and lab laboratory and they are now getting involved into also Creative Europe funded project called Curious. Where actually through the sort of theater of wonder they are trying actually to tackle different aspects and segments of collaboration between theater performances, th theatrical arts and scientific contribution and scientific background also related to contemporary research and uh, current findings of our time. So, altogether, many interesting activities will run through our R plus science lab, but first place we are truly glad for being able to present the, the program in, in physical spaces, not only in virtual. And the second time I think it is very contemporary in a way, because it is representing a dichotomy that it's somehow in the focus of our activities and program. Originally, it was planned, planned to be conceived around the artificial intelligence and how we are looking at it, not only as a super technology, but also as a phenomenon of our time, something which is clearly shaping our new realities, whether in physical or virtual spaces. On the other hand, new realities appeared at the, end of, uh, at the beginning of this year, and actually we were somehow invited and also feeling obliged to address them. That dichotomy, therefore, is not only covering our relations towards artificial intelligence, but even more to the fears that we faced throughout this massive lockdown and uh, practically shutdown of our global activities, us as human civilization. We were faced by something unknown, uh, very dif difficult to understand, to deal with, to face many challenges. And in that dichotomy, nowadays actually we, see, we can see, we can detect easily how we as humans can answer really serious threats that we are facing. We as humans truly need to provide probably new means, new ways how to behave, how to treat nature, how to be more careful about our surrounding, our environment. In that sense, the exhibition Intelligence 01 is treating at the same time artificial intelligence as a motivation behind, as a thing which, which, which is in focus of our activities inside European Artificial Intelligence Lab project, but also at the same time new realities that literally instantly emerge at the beginning of year 2020.